Good morning. Monday, May the 15th, and it's a sunny day. It's going to be a warm, great sunny day today. Thank you, Lord. We're going straight into the Bible, the King James Bible, the book of John. We're going to finish off chapter 4, verses 31 to 54. <clears throat> And we just saw him at the last, we left him was uh, the woman at the well, if you remember that story. So here we are, 31. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Therefore the disciples said to one another, Hath any man brought him out to eat? Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit into eternal, life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth, another reapeth. I sent you to reap, that whereon you bestow no labour. Other men laboured, and you are entered into their labours. And many of the Samarit Samaritans of that city believed on him. For the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that I ever did. <clears throat> so when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. And he said unto the woman, Now we believe because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Saviour of the world. Now after two days he departed thence and went into Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet hath no honour in his own country. Then he was coming to Galilee. The Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went unto the feast. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine, and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said unto him, Except you see what signs and wonders, you will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down ere my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and believeth him with his whole house. And this again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea unto Galilee. How fortunate they were in those days to witness Jesus himself and hear his words and, and be manifest in his glory and see the miracles. We can't. We can't do that. We live by faith alone and the testimony of the word of the Bible and the testimony of others, and, and miracles do still happen, but we don't have that living presence of Jesus, except in our hearts. The woman at the well is a good story. I mean, you would have to say she was looking for love, wouldn't you? She'd had five husbands and she's living with another man. She was looking for love. Looking to be satisfied from this world. This world doesn't give us that satisfaction, does it? 
To me, that's an aspect of the woman at the well, that having witnessed Jesus, she realized it came upon her. And this is an excellent moment in the series called The Chosen. They do the woman at the well very well because you can see the expression on her face and the look in Jesus' eye when he looks at her and he tells her these things. And there's a dawning that comes over her that she's realizing this is the Messiah. I'm face to face with the Messiah. What a, <laughs> I get excited about that. That's, that's, a, that's a terrific moment, terrific moment. And you can see how she suddenly, her whole demeanor, everything changes in her mind and her heart. And she gets all excited. She goes from being sarcastic and doubting and, and adamant about her ways and how things are in the world to being a little bit more quiet and asking questions and inquisitive to the realization that this is the Messiah. He revealed himself to her. The woman at the well was the first person he officially revealed himself as the Messiah. outside of the disciples. So that's a powerful moment in Jesus' ministry. And of course, he went to the Samaritans who were shunned by the Jews. And that's a long story. It goes back to the Old Testament. So there's power in that. There's power in that. Because they would have never expected the Messiah to reveal himself to them. So that's an amazing story. That's an amazing story. You see, if you can tell that this isn't a worldly created story, that the Bible flies in the face of everything that you would write. You know, if you were trying to establish an, someone as being the Messiah, you would have gone, I would have gone to credible witnesses. I would have not have gone to a woman who had been married five times and was living in sin with another man in Samaria, who are hated by the Jews and who hate the Jews. Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you go to credible witnesses? This is the power, this is the will, this is the understanding of God that we can never truly understand until we meet him face to face how he does things, you know? Once you start to maintain that concept, get it going in your mind, and you realize, and you look at these stories, and you say, well, if I was to write that story, if I was to make it up, and it'd be a work of fiction, this is how I would write it. I bet you if you went to any known author and, and say, how would you have written that story? That's how they would have written it. They would have had credible witnesses, believable witnesses. When a lawyer puts a witness on the stand, he wants that witness to be credible. He doesn't want the opposition to be able to tear that witness apart and, and you know, discredit them. Well, you know, that's just the woman of the street. She's been married five times. Hell, her credibility is worth nothing. You know? She's the lowest of society. She's not even a Jew. How, how, why would you pick her, you know? But he did. There's a mystery in that, but there's great wisdom in that. Because God doesn't do things the way man does. He does things the way God does. So when it comes to our own lives, when it comes to praying and asking for healings, when it comes to praying and asking for help in your life, be prepared for the unexpected. Be prepared for his timing and his will. Yes, you can expect an answer. Yes, you can. Yes, he hears you. But be sinless when you do. Be totally repentive of all your sins. Do not go to him stained. Ask for forgiveness first. 
Cleanse yourself. Ask him to search your heart. Cleanse yourself of all sins. Purge you, your soul. Say, Lord, look within me and cleanse me. I want to come to you clean and have something to ask of you. You wouldn't go meet King Charles just after working on your tractor for eight hours a day, covered in grease and smelling and sweaty and dirty and say, come on, honey, we're going to go meet King Charles. Oh, yeah, he's just going to take me as I am. I'm going to go meet him. No, you'd brush up. You'd clean yourself, wouldn't you? You'd put on something decent. You'd go meet him. Well, that's what you should be doing to God, cleaning yourself up. Meet him clean and be prepared for the unexpected when he answers you because he answers you according to your needs and according to his will. And if you don't need it and it's not within his will, it ain't going to happen. Okay? So yes, you can have the expectation that he will hear you and that there will be an answer. But keep an open mind as to what that answer, what that healing, what that answer to your prayer will be. Okay? He's not some fairy that's going to sprinkle fairy dust and make everything better just because you ask it. You know, you're not rubbing a, a bottle, a lamp, and, and a genie's appearing and he's going to grant you three wishes. No, no, that's not God. Don't treat him that way. Don't ever treat him that way because he will not hear you. Well, he'll hear you, but he'll ignore you. And if you're in sin, he will be turning his back to you because he cannot look upon sin. So cleanse yourself first. We are not righteous. We are only righteous through his righteousness. We are not holy. We are only holy through his holiness. So gain righteousness and holiness by being clean through Jesus Christ and then talk to him and listen take time to listen listen upon the word of God because he loves you and I love you too thank you for listening thank you for watching and if you feel someone else needs to hear this please share bye for now